Spawning sites are a critical habitat for most fish species, including walleye. Rivers and creeks that are tributaries to lakes with walleye are prime locations because the flowing water washes metabolic wastes away from the developing eggs. Spawning sites are generally located downstream from rapids, in swifts, or around the edges of reefs. If suitable spawning sites are in limited supply, or if they've been altered, fish populations and diversity may be compromised. Since 1979, Lanark County community groups and local NGOs have worked on walleye spawning bed construction and rehabilitation. Their goal is to improve natural reproduction in lakes and rivers where walleye are currently present, but where the habitat for spawning has deteriorated or could be enhanced. When planning a walleye spawning bed project, begin by gathering all available information from landowners, governments, and other agencies to determine if any current sites might benefit from rehabilitation. Before you begin work, you will need to obtain official permits and get permission from private landowners if you wish to access their land. Here on the Mississippi River, we are rehabilitating an old spawning bed that had been constructed in 1979. Our first task was to place a silt screen downstream from the work area. The screen is meant to prevent silt from washing downriver while work proceeds on the spawning bed. Silk screens are mandatory for any site you want to construct or rehabilitate. Once the screen is in place, the old spawning bed was removed. The bed had silted in and was overgrown with vegetation, possibly because cement structures had impeded the natural flow of water. The next step was to bring in the new rock. Before placing it in the water, we made sure it was clean. Washing the rock can be done on site, but stay back far enough from the shore to avoid runoff into the water body. This rock had been washed at its source, so we didn't need to do it again. Before distributing the new rocks, the hi -ho operator created a rock road on which to travel back and forth. This was important to prevent stirring up the substrate and causing siltation downstream. Once the work was done, the rock road was removed. How the rocks are distributed is important for the ultimate success of the project. Small and mid-sized rocks, ranging from 4 to 12 inches in diameter, should be used to provide crevices where developing eggs are protected from predation. A few large boulders, three to four feet in diameter, should be randomly placed to provide resting areas for fish, spawning in the fast-flowing springtime waters. The spawning bed should be deep enough to allow for water level fluctuations. Fish spawn needs to be submerged during the incubation and hatching periods and must be well oxygenated to hatch successfully. At this site on the Mississippi, the spawning bed is adjacent to a bridge. In order to bring in heavy equipment for moving the rocks down to the water, we had to close off one side of the road. This meant bringing in a certified flag person to direct traffic. Remember, no matter how large or small the project, permits are always required before work can begin. The number of volunteers and the equipment required will depend on the location and type of access to the spawning bed. The basic process, however, always remains the same. Having a crane here was a huge help because the rocks had to be placed in a large area extending quite far from the bridge. Having big machinery on the job cut back on volunteer labor and made the work easier and quicker, but it added substantially to the overall cost of the project. Not all sites require the use of heavy equipment. The least costly rehabilitation projects are those in small creeks or rivers with easy access. Here you could do all the work by hand. You would, however, need more volunteers. In large lakes or in lakes lacking inflowing or outflowing streams, walleye may spawn on the wave-washed shores of islands or the mainland. They may also spawn on mid-lake shoals. 
While late summer is a good time for most spawning bed work, mid-lake shoal projects are best carried out in winter. Rehabilitating or constructing a new spawning bed in winter provides its own challenges. Here on Patterson Lake, the spawning bed is on a mid-lake shoal. This meant transporting rocks over a long stretch of ice. Before this could happen, snow and ice depths had to be checked and a safe path marked from the shore to the work site. We chose a day in mid-February to place the rocks. Volunteers arrived on snowmobiles and ATVs drawing homemade sleds. Old car hoods were particularly effective for skidding the rocks out to the spawning site. Other volunteers were out at the site helping to distribute rocks evenly over the area. Come spring, the rocks fall through the ice and form the walleye spawning bed. Care needs to be taken to ensure they are at least two feet below the summer water levels of the lake. The success of spawning beds located on lakes relies on the scouring action of waves on the developing eggs. If a site is near shore, it needs to be open to the prevailing winds and waves. Now all that's left to do is monitor the spawning activity in the following years. It's a good idea to periodically check the condition of spawning beds to ensure they remain free of algae and silt.